Um, now, we've only got one speaker left, so I would like to prompt you to start thinking about what question um, you want to ask. I think we're going to have time for quite a few questions. Um, so do remember, you can always write it on a card um, if you prefer to do that and give it to, uh, give it to Kate. Thank you. So, our final speaker is Graham Stewart, MP. Uh, Graham was elected as the MP for Beverly and Holdenness in 2005 and is the chairman of the Education Select Committee. Graham will be reflecting on what all the recent policy changes might mean for children with SEM and how we can make the most of this time of incredible change in our education system. Graham. Thank you, Tim. It's a great pleasure to be here with you uh, this evening. And as so often when I speak on matters of education, as the chairman of the uh, Select Committee, I find myself following uh, speakers, and in fact, speaking to an audience, nearly all of whom know more about the subject than I do. But I'm a politician, so I don't let that in any way sway me from uh, <laughs> going ahead and speaking anywhere. Uh, so I'm, I'm well tempted to rip up my notes that I'd come here with, particularly as I'm aware, with so much expertise in the room, that we want to move on to questions and allow an interaction uh, with the panel expertly chaired by Tim. Uh, so I think I'll just flip through a few thoughts that have been uh, triggered by listening to what's been said so far today. And Kian, of course, was talking about quality of teaching, about having appropriate people with commitment and understanding and care and patience and knowledge um, and ensuring that. And I think there's, there's a lot of uh, positive aspects to government policy in that area of trying to raise the quality of teaching. Of course, there was a white paper called The Importance of Teaching. And I think that was welcome, the government setting up there the central importance of raising quality of teaching by supporting teachers, by ensuring that there is uh, continuing professional development, uh, and by making sure there are greater opportunities for teachers to learn about special educational needs in their training, uh, to allow uh, special schools to become uh, teaching schools, and a number of other initiatives in that area. Uh, what, and of course the green paper lies above everything we're talking about today. And there are aspects of the Green Paper, and some of them have been touched on, uh, that one can be negative about. And there are also very many uh, positive aspects. The, uh, it's particularly good at describing what's wrong with the current system. And it's not bad at painting the kind of picture of what you might like to see as well, how things could be better. Um, now, I know I am a politician, but I'm still always sceptical, because uh, when I hear people, politicians are very good at describing how awful their inheritance is, and how awful existing situation is, and they're not bad at painting a picture of just how marvellous it would be if parents didn't have to fight every step of the way against their local authority to try and get um, the, the, uh, uh, the services that their child desperately needs. So, and of course, what often, when you're listening to the passionate denunciation of the existing situation and the beautiful uh, rhapsodic description of the future that's going to come about, we often don't spend enough time looking carefully at those policy announcements which are meant to take us from the one to the next. And I normally don't have any problem with either the critique, which is normally, it may not always be completely fair, but it's normally got a pretty good basis in fact. And then you look at the picture of what we'd like to have, and that's also pretty compelling and attractive. When you come and look at the detail, of course, that's where uh, you have the most questions. And one of the problems we have, of course, now with the Green Paper is it does both those two things very well, but we have an insufficient level of detail about what is going to happen as a result. We know that there are, the statements are going to be replaced and there are questions about the potential impact of that. Of course, done well with coordination between the different departments, with greater training and awareness by staff, it's easy to imagine a much better uh, combined plan than that we have now. But we do not yet see all the detail. We don't see the timing and the implementation of it to know whether or not that's going to happen. Which I'm sorry, I'm just raising questions, but my role and that of the select committee is to raise que is to ask questions of government. Uh, we our job is to uh, hold the government to account. Another topic which I pick up on is in the education system, the m two most important things in the way it actually operates, as opposed to the theory of how it operates. Um, the two most important aspects are the assessment and the accountability frameworks because they drive how schools behave and uh, certainly it's our view on the committee 
that government needs to create frameworks for assessment and accountability for schools that gives equal weight to the progress and indeed attainment of every child. And that sounds fairly obvious, it sounds like apple pie and ice cream. But if you then look at government policy, the last government's policy, five good GCSEs, and you ask, does that system, that, that, does that measure of school performance, which rides high above every other, does that lead to equal weight being given to the progress of every child within a school, particularly in this context, children with special educational needs? And I think you would conclude, no, it probably doesn't. Because the key determinant for a head to make sure they don't get the stamp of failure on their forehead is to make sure that they deliver on that. They know if they don't, because of the way that Ofsted comes in and the way that uh, uh, information is then publicised, that they are at risk. So that was the last government. You move to this government, we have the announcement of the English Baccalaureate, which of course is, probably, is achieved now and probably will be in future by rather fewer pupils than achieve five good GCSEs. So there's a potential implication of that, that further focus will be go on the borderline students of the English Baccalaureate further up the achievement scale, which would suggest there isn't an equal focus on the progress of the child with special educational needs. So what I don't think we have yet, we didn't have from the last government, we don't have from this, is a coherent overview to make sure that all assessment and accountability mechanisms work together so as to give equal weight to the progress of every child. We have a lot of welcome measures such as looking at uh, the government said it's going to hold schools to account um, on the progress of children with free school meals as part of the pupil premium. There is the, uh, they're saying they're going to look at how SEN is viewed, but we have to look at all the accountability measures for schools as one coherent whole. And of course the Secretary of State announced just a few weeks ago that all secondary schools um, must get at least 50% of their pupils to get five good GCSEs. And as 870 of the 3,000 odd schools currently don't achieve that, and one can assume that the several hundred schools who are currently achieving it above that um, may be at fear of their lives of failing to do so, you're going to move to 40, perhaps even 50% of all secondary school heads in this country being obsessed with one thing above all else, and that is to make sure that they get 50% um, of their pupils to five good GCSEs. So any fears one had about the English Baccalaureate um, uh, skewing the system towards certain subject choices, perhaps uh, wrongly shoehorning some children into the wrong courses in order to help with that table, are cast aside, I think, by the, uh, this new imposition of a minimum of 50%, at which point one can imagine that heads are going to choose courses which they think are most likely to deliver passes in five GCSEs, regardless of their value, either in progression educationally or employment-wise. Uh, I've probably gone on about that too much, but I think it goes to the, if you don't understand the levers and mechanisms of what actually drives school performance on a day-to-day -day basis, then you will end up, regardless of the rhetoric, either of the critique of the past or the painted beautiful vision of the future, you will not actually drive performance in the schools to give equal weight to the progress of every child. And any system that doesn't do that is likely to fail the most vulnerable of all, which are the children with special educational needs. So, uh, one plea to you tonight is keep making the case that we want a system that have accountability for schools that ensures that the head who wants to get ahead gives weight to the progress of every child and any system that puts the emphasis elsewhere will be at the expense of the child with SEN. And I think it's that coherent whole in accountability as well as all the other measures which much more expert, expert other members of the panel have talked about. It's bringing that all together, that we can deliver something, can deliver the vision which is in the green paper and which does paint a picture of parents not having to fight every step of the way and not, um, uh, and not seeing their children uh, abandoned and fail to be served properly by the schools that are supposed to be there to make sure that they, along with every other child, get a fair crack in life. Thank you very much indeed.